big data and analytics to drive how we can use data. Sorry, I'd like to see the screen as well. So I'm going to do this a bit. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. So um, today we'll be talking on the topic how we can use data and analytics to drive business decisions. All right. So before we get started, I'll just like to briefly introduce myself to tell you a little bit about myself. Okay. Okay. So, um, I mean, you can just read the slide, but then I'll still try to, you know, say a little, um, a little bit about myself. So my name is Faith Ajibo Efemi. And I'm, I'm currently work as a business transformation analyst at AXA Mansard. I don't know if you all know AXA Mansard. It's an insurance company. So you can, you know, buy our products, buy insurance, life insurance, any kind of insurance, basically. So um, I'm a certified um, power platform developer and uh, I'm a certified Microsoft data analyst associate as well. Okay, so I'm passionate about, you know, getting results, beating data, trying to dive into data to, you know, get insights to help businesses grow and, you know, improve their processes. And also in my free time, I would like to say something fun about myself. So in my free time, you know, when I'm doing my, my thing, I like to, <laughs> to try DIYs out using YouTube. So I, I watch like YouTube videos, try to, you know, learn new stuff, how to, you know, mix something together to get something. That's just what I do in my free time, basically. So um, today we'll be looking at the top, um, sorry, this is my table of content. We're looking at the evolution of technology and how it relates to, you know, the topic today. Uh, what data-driven decision-making is, what the benefits are. Also, we're looking at use cases in the industry, and we're looking at the steps that we can take, you know, to achieve um, data-driven decision-making. All right. So according to Craig Mundy, who is a senior advisor to the CEO at Microsoft, he said, and I quote, data is becoming the new raw material for businesses. So we have um, data, we have data everywhere. I mean, we all generate data. And this is becoming the new um, raw material for businesses. So how can this, this data is relatively, you know, I mean, it's free, it's everywhere. But are businesses really making, you know, trying to take advantage of this and then trying to, you know, benefit and drive and drive, um, growth, I mean, from, from, I mean, push their business forward to, you know, make more profit and, um, and um, basically grow. Are businesses really tapping into this, you know, field? So um, before we go into that, I would just like to, you know, talk about the evolution of technology and where we are currently. All right. Uh, I don't know if all of us can see the image on the screen. So that's like a handwritten note. So uh, I believe we all remember a few years back when all we had was, you know, letter, letter writing to our loved ones. We'd write letter, we'd use post office. I don't know if any one of us ever tried that out. <laughs> I mean... So Gen Z is yes, basically. So <laughs> we would, you know, write letters sent to our loved ones. Then later we had this um, our mobile device here with the whole hook and everything. And then we had our landlines. So this time, data was not really generated because most of our um, contacts, we would either cramp them or would, you know, we had diaries where we'd write our contacts. And if we wanted to make phone calls, we'd go to call centers. I believe we all know call centers go to call centers, you know, place our calls. But nowadays, we have an iPhone, iPhone gang here. We have Samsung. I know people debate Samsung iPhone shares with that. We're not going to talk about that here today. So we have our, um, our phones, and most of our information about us basically can be found on our phones, our pictures, our social media pages. Basically, everything about us can be found on your phone. I mean, if I pick someone's phone here, I don't even need to, you know, Talk to you at all. I can say one or two things about you just going through your media and you know the kind of apps you have on your phone, basically. So that's just data generally about you. Okay, um, I believe most of us have seen this also. Maybe some businesses still use this, but um, this is our desktop, it will only process little amount of data. So um, but nowadays, I mean we use different we have laptops, we have iPads and all of that to process our data, you know, more fast. Faster, rather. And um, nowadays, I believe, we, okay, so we used to have, okay, we still use that. We have our drive. I think I saw one here the other time where we, where we store our data. We Now we've moved to the cloud. I believe we all have, all of us here, we have Google, um, what's it called? Drive. Google Drive. We have, um, app, uh, what's, what's the one for, for Outlook? So we, we, we save all of, 
sorry, sorry. Okay, one drive rather, not not outlook. Outlook is the email emailing app. Yeah. So we have outlook. Uh, sorry, we have one drive. We have Google Drive. We save all our all of our information on the cloud because we don't want to lose them. All right. So uh, moving to our present day, I mean our TVs, most of our appliances, they are all connected to the internet, right? We even have smart cars now that just press something and then you are good to go. So um, the evolution of technology basically has led to an insane amount of data being generated. So that's just the, the bottom line here. Okay, um, so I'll be asking us a question. Have you ever wondered how much data you personally generate every day? Have you ever wondered the amount of data or you believe that I just wake up, just go to work and I don't generate data? Okay, so I'm going to say that every of our move online leads to data generation. I believe most of us, before we came here today, we posted, maybe we took a picture, we posted it on IG, we replied some emails related to work, all of those things lead to gener data generation. And so far you're online, you're doing one thing or the other, you're even existing, you're generating data. So um, also we have over 4.66 billion active internet users worldwide. So we can only imagine the amount of data that is being produced daily. I'm just trying to you know, give us an idea into the amount of data that is being generated daily. All right, so we'll be moving on to evolution of technology, which is the internet. So we'll be looking at uh, the year 2020. I believe we all know this uh, year was a very spectacular year, right? Who can tell us what happened in the year 2020? Okay, let me just help you guys out. Okay, so um, COVID, I believe we all know COVID. So COVID, um, you know, kind of shut, that, shut down the world in the year 2020. So uh, we're looking at, you know, what happened, how the trend, basically, how people, you know, started generating more data during, during that period, 2020, as a, as, a, um, as a study, basically. So 2.5 quintillion bytes of data were generated every day. That's, to some people, it sounds like jargon. So I'll try to give us more context. So 2.5 quintillion bytes of data is, um, like, one... Um, 1 million um, terabytes. Okay, let's, let me come down a bit. So that's like 100, that's like 1 billion uh, gigabytes. I believe we are all familiar with the word yeah, time gigabytes because we subscribe, we do 1 gig and all of that, yes. MTN cheats, yes. <laughs> all right, so um, for Twitter, over 5,000 tweets uh, were generated every internet minute, every, se sorry, seconds rather. In the year 2020 for every second and for for each day we generated over 5 million tweets that's for twitter so for google 3.5 billion searches were made on google then for whatsapp <clears throat> i believe we all use whatsapp so um over 4, 000, 4, 41 million messages by whatsapp users in one internet minute then for netflix 400 and 404,000 plus users stream netflix on streamed on netflix for every minute then youtube 300 hours of videos were uploaded per minute on youtube then for email 306.4 billion emails were sent per day in the year 2022 in the year 2020 rather and lastly amazon shipped over 6,000 packages per minute so we can see the insane amount of data i mean data generation in the year 2020 and this has been like you know uh, everyday life keep on generating more and more and more data so um how can businesses basically leverage on this data generation is there any advantage advantage to you know this um, creation of data can we can we uh, is there any benefit we can actually derive from all of this data that i've just mentioned that okay we generate this we generate that what exactly is the advantage and what benefits can we get from data so that's basically what the presentation today is all about all right so we enter the presentation proper Data driven decision making for business. Okay, making decisions can be very hard. For example, this morning when I was coming here, you know, after checking all, all of my all of the dresses I have, and I trust me, I have beautiful dresses. I didn't know which one to wear this morning coming to this event. I'm like, should I wear jean and trouser, or should I, you know, take it off a notch a bit? So making decisions now everyday life can be hard. Can be from using um, uh, what's it called public transport to using boat or to using ride down of this, you know, um, ride hailing apps rather. So, and when it comes to businesses, knowing the right things to do can be a little bit, you know, tricky. Because I mean, 
as a business owner, you don't want to make a mistake where your customers start having issues and your products will not like sell properly. So, but what if we could use the data around us, the data we generate in our business, our own personal data, what if we can use it, you know, to improve our decisions, basically. So this is where data-driven decision-making comes in. And it simply means that <clears throat> you are using data and analytics to inform your decisions and also to guide you as well. So we are not like, it's, it's, it's like, it's like um, you know, you're in a dark room, but then you have a touch, you know, to point and then navigate your way. So that's basically what uh, data-driven decision-making is. And it can include everything from trying to understand what happened in your past, what is happening presently, and what will happen in the future. By using your machine uh, learned models to analyze your data, you have so many speakers talk about machine learning, all of that. So this is basically, <clears throat> apologies, excuse me, rather. So this is basically, you know, using your the current data that you have, training your model on it, and then trying to okay. So the current data you have already has um, the output that you desire. Because I mean, if it's a custom, if it's your customer data, whether your customer is satisfied or not, you can tell from data you have currently. So you build your model based on that. And then you use that model to make predictions into the future to, to be able to you know predict outcomes under similar conditions. So that's basically what this is about. All right. And thanks to the evolution of technology and big data, I mean businesses now have access and then they generate more data nowadays. So that's quite easy for you know businesses to tap into this goodness. All right. Moving on, at the end of every data driven decision making is analytics part. So you can't say you want to start making decisions based on your data without analytics. So analysis is basically, you know, you are gathering your data, you are cleaning it, you're organizing it. You are then visualizing to see trends in your data, to see exactly what is going on so that it can help you as, as a business owner or personally to make decisions. And what is the goal? What, what exactly are we trying to achieve here? So the goal we're trying to achieve here is to basically understand what's happening in your data so that it can inform your decision, can be able to make better and accurate decisions. And there are so many um, advantages. I believe some of us have been thinking about, you know, different ways that this um, data decision making can basically, you know, benefit us as a business or as an individual. And one of that is that it can help us to, it can help to improve our decision making process. It can help us to make more money and also become efficient as a business. But we must note that for us to be able to take advantage of this uh, benefit I listed, we must be able to collect data and use the right data so that we can get accurate results. All right. Okay. Um, so what are the benefits of making decisions based on data for individuals and, you know, as a business now? Okay, so the first thing is that it increases confidence in your decisions. When you make decisions based on data, you have a backbone, you have a support, you have something new, something that is, you know, prompting you to make that decision. You're not just making the, your gut feeling that, okay, um, I have a feeling. If I walk on the road in the night without, you know, any help, nothing's going to happen to me. You're not making your decision based on, on your gut. You actually have something to back you up. So it will increase, definitely increase your morale and your motivation, you know, to make, to take bolder steps. So that's basically one of the advantage, one of the benefits of using DDM. DDM. Also, secondly, more efficient allocation of resources. <clears throat> All right, so when you use um, DDDM, that's data repetition making in your everyday life and in your business, you know, you'll be able to um, locate the areas in your business that need you to, you know, focus more attention on and the areas that are, you know, doing very well. I guess, I, I, I guess we understand that. So also another uh, point is it en enhances your strategic plan and helps you you know, to come up with a long-term plan on how you want to run your business or you want to run your daily life. That's another advantage. Another advantage is that it improves customer service and experience. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So it improves customer service and experience in the sense that once you, um, you know, you, you're able to determine the needs of your customer and how best you can meet these needs. You can also, you know, anticipate their, their needs. For example, Maybe at a particular time of the year, you know that maybe during the rainy season, definitely people buy more umbrellas or if people that can't afford umbrellas, they'll buy, I don't know if you know these nylons that they sell. So you see people on the road, you know, selling at that particular point in time or a little bit towards that, that period. So it will help you to, <clears throat> to improve your customer service and experience and you can also anticipate the needs of your customers, basically. 
Also, it helps to make faster and better decisions in the sense that when you have all the information you need to make your decision, when it's at the tip of your finger, you'll be able to make you know, faster and better decisions. And lastly, it increases your efficiency and improves your accuracy. So when you have, when you rely on your data, it's definitely increase your efficiency. You can be able to, you know, you make less mistakes and then you'll be able to allocate your resources more efficiently. So that's just that basically. <clears throat> All right. So we'll be looking at the industry use case. I have three industries here. And it's going to be like, um, I won't say call and response because I mean, <laughs> it's not, it's, we're not singing here. It's going to be like an interact session, basically. Okay, so um, this is how we're going to do this. I'll talk on the problem. I'll mention the industry, the problem, the solution, and then anyone in the audience can just, you know, tell us what benefit you think that business derived from, from a solution that was provided. So we'll start with Walmart. I believe we all know Walmart. We all, we're all familiar with uh, the brands here. Okay. All right. So the problem, executives wanted to know the type of merchandise to stop before the storm. So let me give us a little backstory. So in 2004, <clears throat> during, um, there, was, there was a hurricane called Hurricane Franch, uh, Frances that happened. And <clears throat> so executives in Walmart, they wanted to, you know, know what their customers would like to buy during that uh, weather condition or during that period. So what did they do? This is the solution. So their data analysts mined their, <clears throat> their customer records for, you know, the historical customer records that they have. And they were able to discover that most of their uh, customers, so they, okay, so let me, let, me, let me put it this way. So they mined records of customers under similar condition. All right, so they mined records of customers under similar weather, sim, uh, similar weather condition. And they were able to determine that during this uh, period, when they're anticipating um, a storm or hurricane, customers usually buy pop tarts and beer during this period. And what did they do? They sent uh, truckloads of, of um, beer and pop tarts to their location, to their store locations. So who can tell us? I don't know. Like I said, I was going to throw it to the house. Who can tell us the benefits you think Walmart derived from using data to make this business decision? Anyone at all? Yes, please. At that particular period, uh, enables them to actually push out at that particular time uh, and also enables them to actually uh, bring more sales to the company. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Okay, so one of the you mentioned one of the benefits already. So another benefit is that they were able to anticipate their customers' needs, right? They were able to anticipate the customer and they were able to, you know. Sorry, they were able to make decisions. They were able to, you know, send products, and then that in turn generated lots of revenue for the company. So that's an advantage. That's an example, rather. So we're moving on to Amazon. Apologies. Apologies, guys. So for Amazon, the e-commerce wanted to, they needed to generate more accurate product recommendations for their users. This is the problem. So what did they do? They actually, you know, tried to look into their customer um, records, past customer records, purchase records, and then they coupled this with behavioral analytics. So they were able to, they were able to uh, make accurate recommendations. And that is only stop at that. They actually incorporated these recommendations into the whole life cycle of from buying, from you um, browsing the products that you want to buy, to you actually checking out from making an order. For example, if you go to Amazon, okay, let me say for example, I buy a phone on Amazon now, and then they might actually recommend me buying a, they might actually recommend to me that I should buy a phone case when I'm checking out, when I want to make payment or something. Or they might send me an email, I don't know if you uh, purchased anything on Amazon before. They might send me an email a few days after that. Okay, you got the food from us. It would be nice for you to get you know, a pouch also to protect your food. So what, um, what did they do? 
So, okay, I already told us what they did. So who can tell us uh, the benefits that you think Amazon generated from, you know, benefits that they enjoy from, from doing this? Anyone? Yes, please. Right, thank you very much. So that's like the major benefit. They, they were able to increase revenue and also customer satisfaction. They're able to, they're able to like, you know, satisfy their customers, make accurate recommendations to them. Even things that you don't feel like you need. Just, oh, I need this thing to protect my phone. So basically. So uh, moving on to the next one, Netflix. We all know Netflix. So um, the problem, the company needed to find a way to enhance its user experience and to make customers to stay on, on the platform. Basically, what this basically means, they want to like continue to be relevant and stay competitive. That's just a simple um, meaning to this. So what did they do? What solution? So um, they basically started studying different metrics that's related to customer behavior and also interaction on the app. So they started studying metrics around, you know, watch time, your location, the kind of movie that you watch, you know, when you want to register on Netflix to ask for certain information. So they started using all of those information to make recommendations to users. And I believe, um, for example, I watch Korean movies a lot. I don't know if anyone has said Akemi or Souls yet. I'm a fan too. <laughs> okay, so so if you if you go on, um, so if I want to watch movies, I either watch based on recommendation. Maybe someone has seen the movie before. This movie is very interesting. Go and watch because I don't want to waste my data. I mean, data is expensive now. So what do I do? If I don't get recommendation from any of my friends, next thing I do is I go I go to uh, Netflix and then I check for related movie movies some, some movies that are related to the movie I've currently seen and then I'll see what I'll see several and then I can pick maybe I'll just read the um, this one okay this one is fine let me just watch it so basically that's what uh, Netflix did and they were able to achieve that by using other users um, you know their records basically to generate recommendations for other people so the benefit here basically I mean Netflix the, the benefit is that it helped them to stay competitive. We have so many streaming platforms, but then we know that Netflix, even though most of the movies there, we know that I don't want to use them, you know. <laughs> but then we know that all the movies, most most movies are Netflix now. You can easily, you know, but then they are still they still want to stay competitive, and this is actually helping them to achieve that. All right. Oh, this didn't come out well. But then you manage. <laughs> So what are the steps? I've mentioned the benefits, this, that. Okay, so how exactly can we achieve this in real life? So making decisions, making a data-driven decision is not complicated at all. It's not complicated to get started with. But then as a stakeholder, whether a business owner, whether an individual, you need to be aware of the many pitfalls, bottlenecks that you encounter when you want to you know, start using this. And also as an organization or as a business, you must be ready to accept Data decision making, basically. So the step, the first thing is that you must set clear goals and objectives. So if you are working for someone, or maybe working as a business, okay. So you must be able to get your stakeholders' expectation because some stakeholders, in this case, okay, let me let me know you the word stakeholders. Maybe business owners or someone you are working with, they might be having unrealistic expectations. Like you know the data you are generating as a business, and then you want us to perform magic and come up with a result. So get their expectations, talk to them, let them understand that this is what we can achieve. And also when you set goals and objectives, you'll be able to you know, navigate the whole process because you'll be able to tell, okay, what data will I be needing? Then how exactly are we going to go about this? So this is what we do in the first step. So secondly, the second step, we acquire the right data. So after, <clears throat> after setting our goals and objectives, the next thing is to acquire the data. And we can acquire our data as a business or as an individual from internal sources and external sources. Internal sources in the sense that you can, you know, get your data from your customers by um, putting out surveys or having one-on-one -on -one interaction with them just to get their feedback. Also your uh, historical records, your the company database, that's for internal. Then for external, you can get from um, social media, um, basically on social media, you can get from market trends, you can read on financial reports, reports from uh, different companies, you can get your data from, from there as well. So the next step after <coughs> acquiring the right data is for you to prepare and clean the data. So this is actually a very important step because I believe you, we wouldn't want to use inaccurate data to, to build our models or to analyze at all because we will not get the, 
the um will not get the the how do I put it now? Sorry. Yes. So we will be able to like if it won't give us desired result basically. So that's just so this step is actually very very important. So we are preparing our, our data to be ready for us to be able to perform our data analysis on. So the next step after cleaning our data, preparing the data. Okay, so it's important to note that during this third step, <coughs> we carry out different um, forms of cleaning, like outlier detection, like removing your, um, what's it called? In inconsistent is basically your data. So you remove all of that, make sure you take care of all of that before you move on to the next step, which is you perform data analysis. So this is basically deep diving into your data to bring out, you know, insights, things that you don't know or things that you can't tell from just looking at your data. So this is basically where you perform that. And the goal here is to help your business towards to make better and accurate decisions. So after, you know, after performing all your data analysis, I believe you don't want to keep it to yourself. Yeah. Definitely. So you talk to your board of directors, your stakeholders, basically your business owners, you talk to them, you share the insights with them. And you must note that when you're sharing insights, it has to be clear and concise. You don't want to bore people to death. Oh, so I did this analysis. This is the model that we use. Okay, so when X and Y, nobody's interested in that. Just go straight to the point. Be clear and concise. Hit it. You can even use visualizations, you know, to make your your uh, presentation or you know how you share your insight to make it more engaging, basically. So after that, <clears throat> after sharing your insights, now left to your stakeholders and you as the person that performed the analysis, you know, you need to. Okay, so you need to let me use the word ginger your stakeholders to, to make decisions. Because I mean, if you if after running all the analysis, cleaning your data, going through all of that stress, they don't make use of it. I mean, it's pointless. So making decisions is very, very crucial based on um the insights that we shared. So um, and lastly, monitor and adjust. So this is just like a feedback loop. So after um, sharing your insights, working on your data, you have recommendations, you have insights. You monitor after after making your decisions based on the insight that you got. You need to monitor and adjust. It's not a one-way street that you just make decision. That's the end. No, that's not the end. You need to keep on checking and rechecking. Okay, so this decision that we made, what is the benefit? Is it really performing um, as we expected, or we need to change strategy? We need to acquire more data. You know, to analyze and then to to do uh, something else. So this is what this um, monitor and adjust is all about. All right. So that brings me to the end of my beautiful presentation. <laughs> and I'd like to uh, conclude by saying that. <clears throat> Thank you. So making decisions based on data is very, very necessary. If you are a business or you are an individual, you are looking to, you know, thrive in the future. We know so many things that are going on in, in the uh, business space right now. The space is volatile and somebody can just come up with, you know, with, with a particular law or a regulation and then to affect your business. So you must be able to make your decisions based on, on, on data. And also, uh, it's, um, don't think uh, we're we a small business or maybe it's too late for us to start because, I mean, somebody here is doing something. No, now is time for you to start. Also, you can start small. You don't necessarily have to start big. Maybe a small company now, like someone raised a question earlier. A small company, maybe you're just maybe producing Tiger Nuts drink that I like very much. You're producing it, and then you want to, you know, go and <laughs> go and employ my guy here to come and help you analyze the data. You know, you there's not how you know your time to you run into debt. So you need to, you can start small. So just from little little, you can start with your Excel sheet by yourself. Just check up some things online. Start from anywhere. As an individual, basically, you can even you know try to check up things, try to analyze the way you live your life, basically what you do every day. You know, just to help you to make the decisions better. So uh, you start small, get your feet wet, get your hands dirty, and then before you know it, you're already unlocking great insights that's going to make impact in your organization and your life. So thank you very much, everyone. For listening. Okay. So um, if you have any questions, comments, maybe I said something you don't agree with it. I mean, now is like the time to. And also, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And Send me an email if you have any questions. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Fritz. I call up. All right, so if you have any questions for us, please. Everyone knows on, on YouTube, too. Let's, let's start with their questions. So, any, any questions? Please ask you. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. So when you are cleaning uh, your data to handle missing values, basically, depending on the amount of data that you have, if you have a very um, like small data set, then you need to be careful. Because I mean, if you are removing your, it's going to definitely you know make your data more smaller. So, but if you have if you have like a large data set, you can basically remove those. Because I mean, it, it will definitely make your uh, um, your data set as a whole inconsistent, and then the results you get will be a little bit skewed towards, you know, may not be really accurate. So there are so many ways that you can do that. You can basically get rid of, of it totally, or you can, you know, just use random values, just insert it in your data set, and then you are good to go. So what are, I have a question. So what are I think some, some, you have a question, sir. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so what are the uh, different uh, metrics that we ought to to monitor to ensure that we are on track with our business uh, goals and how do we track those metrics and ensure that we are actually you know on the right track? Okay. So it depends on the kind of business that you're doing, basically. Right. So first of all. Kind of in kind of the education space, maybe for example, Octave now, we know we're a digital um, <coughs> institution basically. So, the kind of metrics, Octave as an example, the kind of metrics that we would like to track, we'd like to know the kind of courses that people are more interested in, the kind of courses that people are least interested in, the demography. For example, now I'm the only female speaker here today, and I believe that in our next conference, definitely we could have, <laughs> we have more female speakers. Know the field. Maybe ladies are not really interested in, you know, analytics field or um, artificial intelligence space. So we know how we can, you know, better put the product, better push it forward. Then okay, we'll do this. You be this. You be that. You know, just to let me use the word, gender them to to join the space. So depending, so that's an example of the kind of metric that we can track. Octave as an example. So what else can we track? We can track you know, where our money is coming from. I mean, every business wants to make profit, basically. Yeah, so we can track where our money is coming from. And I mean, so many things to track, but I mean, those are just the, the, on the, on the, the business. business, basically. Yes. Thank so you. I don't know if there's any other question. Yeah, no, on, on okay. I right. think that's Thank you, everyone. It. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah, I don't know. All right. So are you. I think you know, I need the mic of that one. So, uh, I hope you're really um, enjoying the conference so far. I hope you're learning, you know, how the share of it can be used in this different office. I will tell you that, bro, I don't think you have a, you have a choice anymore. But like, whatever it be in technology, I think you have a choice. No, I'm not. I was saying you didn't want to be the one 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 to be the all right, then, please. I uh, would like to welcome the next speaker. Uh, I think he sent a message there of the evening for a very busy man. He views the airplane, he views the airplane, right? So, uh, please, can we ask um, if someone comes for you? So, that is um, uh, Mr. Maxwell. I think on the fly we have him now, so that Chino so. Maduka, and it's going to speak on um, how we apply machine learning in the agricultural sector. You know, of course, definitely this is Nigeria, Africa, we need to understand how we can apply the sector, you know, like the agricultural system, so that we can build better system and solutions for farmers, right? And of course, if we do that, there's no food for us to eat, right? I like food, so of course. Yeah, so uh, let's have uh, Mr. Mr. Chiro. <laughs> 